Hey guys, welcome back to Urania Universe. I'm Portia and I'm an astrologer and a channel. And today I have my very special friend Lisi on and we're going to be talking about some really occult and spirituality and like metaphysical things. Um, so I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Awesome. Uh, I'm Lisi. I'm with Luminous Collections, which is a cannabis and spiritually based website. Um, I'm actually in the cannabis industry as well, but what really led me to it is the healing aspects mm -hmm. and the medicinal properties that it has and I really wanted to bring that education forward and then I somehow got sucked into this awesome metaphysical hole with cannabis as soon <laughs> as I got here um, and that was already something that's been in my life for years and so it just felt so right and one thing's led to another and then I know I met and you. like we've met and connected and it's really cool, too. I feel that, you know, cannabis is definitely, like, we're definitely moving into the age of Aquarius and, like, yeah. all of these, like, very eccentric, futuristic, like, ideas are really coming into form. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, really transforming, like, our way of being and our higher consciousness and, like, bringing back these old principles and, like, old ways of living, which cannabis obviously wow. was a part of that. So I'm, I'm really excited for what you have going on and, like, what you can offer to the community, which is obviously why we're, <laughs> like, always hanging out and working together because we're – we have some really crazy ideas. And we're both Aquarians, so, yeah. you know, it, it works. It <laughs> we totally understand it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're going to start off by just asking each other some questions and, um, yeah, going from there. So, do you want to ask the first question or? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, what do you think of the divine, masculine, and feminine as a sacred union? That's so interesting because that's like something I've been like working on. Um, just like that, having that balance because I feel like a lot of women um, have grown up like wanting to be like or being like a tomboy mm -hmm. and like really more so trying to force this divine masculine energy on us and now like for me that's how I grew up and I was like a tomboy and I wanted to hang yep. out with all guys mm -hmm. and it's like girly things it's like uh, same like, you know, I thought it was cool like yeah. I thought it was cool so now like I've been really embracing my femininity mm -hmm. and just like sexuality and all of those things and I'm all about like restoring that balance mm -hmm. and that's why my focus is like primarily on divine feminine but like I feel now that I'm in this like like being of oneness I've really been like looking at the divine masculine as like how can I like even my partner usually it's like okay I want to like th I'm thinking about some tantric stuff so yeah. like how can I like <laughs> incorporate that incorporate that into like my practices yeah. and like kind of create from that the sexual um, alchemy yeah and, and yeah like and yeah. so I haven't really tapped into it much um yeah but that's definitely on my radar I'm just like Dumb yeah line. like that alchemy and just being able to because when you think about like the sacred union and marriage and like even sex like mm -hmm. it is like a part like it like the outcome is creation like the byproduct that is, of that is creation and it could be in the form of an actual human or mm -hmm. it could be other things like you know you're manifesting like when you're having like a good sex life or you're in a good relationship or good these good connections yeah. like you're in a good space and you start creating these things or I mean it's that like second chakra you know aspect third chakra it's all like stuff. when you think about it fertility rights are the oldest rights that have been around right. and it's like perfect for like you know Bellatine that's coming up tomorrow because right. yeah. like that's all that was focused on was like that you know the maypole right. <laughs> the I know like, right all <laughs> like the imagery like there's just so much all over the place about it and I think that's a really awesome thing yeah um and one thing I I came across like maybe like a year or so ago was like Egyptians they had mm. a lot of penises like in their like Interesting. well I'm trying to think I don't think it's this oracle deck but there's something I have I have to show you because it's like okay. All of these like penises, and it's just like, <laughs> what? And my friend was like so offended. She was like, I don't like this, isn't what? this is like kind of like you know, sacrilegious. And I'm like, well, let me look into this. And like, and I felt that they didn't hide their sexuality, like yeah. with the masculine and with the feminine. It's like they knew the power of like the union of that. Like, and it doesn't have to be a male and a, and a female, it can literally be a male and a male or a female and a female. Mm -hmm. And that's how, like, those polar as long as those polarities are coming together. But I mean. Like, what do you think I'm about all of it? Yeah, I, I'm. I would like to be more into like the partner part of it, yeah. but personally, I know 
I'm definitely I have used like sex yeah. magic for like, oh, but it's wow, more yeah. of like a self, like you know, kind of using it as like yeah. an intimate time for myself. Right. Like, what does like my yeah. body need? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're connected to our pelvic. Like, yeah. that's where we should be, but like we try to like ignore it. Like we were saying yeah. with like the root chakra. Like a lot of women don't tend to those needs, mm-hmm. and like I feel like it's something that you know you have to learn how your body works. You have to learn like what pleases you because if you can't accurately express it to yourself then how are you supposed to accurately express it to someone else right like you going back to like you have to love yourself first always is like a primary principle like I don't see it just as you know yes you have to love who you are but you also have to love your body as well because yeah. your body is your temple and you right. have to like you worship yeah. it and yeah. I think that you can share that with other people too mm-hmm. but yeah you have to I be think careful. that definitely is the first step <laughs> right yeah and that's the thing that's why I'm like so weird about sex. It's mm-hmm. really interesting. Um, and I think that it's definitely a result of like past lives and like maybe like sexual abuse or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's just like my take on it. Like even when it comes to pregnancies, I've had my own pregnancy experiences and they always ended like, like basically the pregnancies ended against my will, whether it's like I had a miscarriage or an abortion that wasn't, you know, my choice. Um, but I am pro choice. So, um, just to say that, like I'm all about, it's not that kind of thing, but it's just like, there's always been some like obstacle or some like trauma. And even in this life with like, you know, that region down there when it comes to that. And it's like, I started to, that's when I did feel like weird about sexuality and it's like, I didn't feel sexual Mm. anymore. And so it's like, now I'm like coming into that. Cause I did have a miscarriage, like about a it was like a little over a year ago so it's like I'm starting to really like pay attention to that area of my body and like really accept it and like starting to feel sexual again and that's where I feel that um like tantric um practices will really help with that because my partner he's awesome and he is like not yeah like he would be down for that so I think it would be I feel like I'm in a safe space to do that you know yeah so I think it's really important um as far as that goes with like the the union of divine masculine and feminine i think that's like important and we should like definitely embody that in some way yeah, yeah. it's just like using your kundalini energy just yeah. like you know you have to focus it and yeah. like you know without like it is a sexual force which yeah. rises from like the base and so that's yeah. like the union of it all mm-hmm. when you like the yin and the yang and they come together and they rise up to you and make you like a complete light being right it goes to it so yeah. So just to piggyback off of that, what do you, what does the divine feminine mean to you? Like when you think about that, what do you like, if it's a feeling or, you know, just like mm. what you see? Or... I, that's such a good one. Mm-hmm. I guess like the divine feminine to me is just the feeling of like warmth and like compassion mm-hmm. and just feeling mm-hmm. like empowered in that too, mm-hmm. because there's such a gentle strength and like being vulnerable. And I feel like that's what I'm learning to, which takes time to be, like, part of, you know, more vulnerable and, like, more open to those kind of things. So. Yeah. And I feel like being receptive is part of the feminine, like, aspect. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. the breathing in, and mm-hmm. it's, like, the sacred alignment before you go forward with, like, the inspired action. Right. And, um... That's just, nice. yeah, like, because that inspired action is, like, that, you know, masculine, right. like, you know. You forward. literally, that was going to be my question after that. You literally took that out of my mind. And you're like, and I'm just going to answer this because I heard that. Like, I was like, oh, so is that the divine masculine part, the action? Which makes sense, mm-hmm. um, definitely. Yeah. I, like, it. I definitely agree with that, too. And when I think about divine feminine, it's, like, that intuitive, receptive, mm-hmm. um, like just knowingness and just like you said the like warmth and comforting like when you think about your mother when you think about the womb all of those things is just like that sense of knowing that mother like nature and like mm-hmm. the mama bear and it's just like I know what's going on and I got this you know but it's also being able to be passive and be being discernment discerning um, when it comes to certain things and then yeah then you can if you couple that with the inspired action of the masculine mm-hmm. divine masculine then that definitely um, I mean you can like create whatever you want yeah. so I feel like you have to get aligned first which I f- feel like we kind of skip over yeah like, you ha- like yeah. for me alignment kind of looks like 
reading, you know, and mm-hmm. like, and then from reading, taking notes and getting into that headspace of right. receptivity. And mm-hmm. then once I'm like, okay, I'm in like a happy space to move forward and work. And I feel like everything just flows so much easier. Yeah. After that. Oh yeah. Definitely. Like, it's just so much easier to get things done. Like even just like simple chores. Like, Cause I'm I know, not like thinking about like all of this other things that I like, I need to be meditating right now. Or I like need to be like focused inward. And then like once it's done, it's like, okay, everything's fine. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I do that too. Cause it's like I have all of these things I have to do and it's just like I think about doing them and it's like Mm -hmm. but I do want to meditate and I want to do and it's usually when I meditate first like that kind of like sets everything and it's just like oh okay like I'm clear and I can go about doing like the things that I want to do or like the tasks that I need to take care of or whatever Mm -hmm. you know so that definitely yep Qigong definitely does that for me yeah yeah I love Qigong all right, so um, let's see. So since we're all on talking about the divine feminine and all that stuff, like, what's your pers- your perspective on the triple goddess? Like, how do you like the maiden, the mother, the crone? You know, how do you look at like that aspect? Um, I think that it's very personal. Um, I think that everyone, female and male, have all those aspects in them. Um, for males, it looks more like the sage would be like you know the crone like Mm -hmm. they have the similarities yeah yeah, that's true but um Hmm. for the feminine and for me it looks a little different I definitely see the maiden mother crone but in between I definitely believe Rebecca Campbell's Mm -hmm. um wild woman like there's that stage in between where it's like Usually it's, I see it in my mom where she's like, I don't quite know what I want to do. And like, where do I go forward with this? Like, I need to like get back into my life purpose again. Mm -hmm. But now you have all this wisdom and you've already, you know, you're almost at like your prime and you can just do whatever you want. And I think that there's a lot of fear going into that age. Oh, yeah. Because it's like you have to go back and like look back at yourself. But that's such a time when you can just reinvent whatever you were before and just go forward with like this newfound strength and just like of a... Right, caring. right, <laughs> like, and then I can really. see how that can flow, and that's like in between. You say like the the mother and the mm-hmm. crone, so I can see how that flows into like the crone. We're just like mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. Exactly, like, I'm going, I'm living my life. Like I've had children, I've done this and that. My like I'm doing may my have thing. Away. Right, like, yeah, I'm doing I'm just, my thing. Yeah. Right, I'm living my traveling life. Traveling the world by right, myself, right. like no care. Which is crazy. You do see yeah. that happen with like women. They just get this whole like it's definitely like a rebirth. Um, Mm-hmm. with that so yeah that's that's really cool and I think it's really interesting like I definitely sometimes identify still most with like the maiden aspect I guess because yeah. like mm-hmm. I I'm not haven't quite reached the mother phase but also at the same time right. like I resonate with the mother phase when I'm like creating something I was just thinking that yeah yeah, yeah. No. and then working with like Mary Magdalene and mm-hmm. you know Kwan Yin and all that you get that like Kind of, because you think Kuan Yin, you associate Kuan Yin Mm -hmm. to, like, the maiden or the mother. So, it would be, Kuan Yin would be the maiden for me, Mary Magdalene would be the mother, Mm -hmm. and then Inanna, who's, like, the Sumerian goddess, Mm -hmm. um, she would be the wild woman. Oh, okay. She goes into, like, the descent and to, like, refine herself and strips everything down through, like, the seven layers of hell, only to be, like... Oh, and then she dies for three yeah, days, yeah. and then she's, like, resurrected, yeah. and, like, that's how, um, and then, like, her partner takes her place. Yeah. And so that, and then finally Lilith would be that crown yeah. destroyer Yeah, aspect. Lilith is, is, yeah, she's awesome. She's a, <laughs> she's a hard one. Right. And, like, <laughs> Lilith, I see, and that's the thing with, like, different, obviously, different avenues of spirituality, religions, whatever you mm-hmm. want to call it. Um, you have like that Lilith aspect, which is similar to like Kali, mm-hmm. which is also similar to um, like Red Tara <laughs> yeah. or um, Hecate. So it's all that like super dark, like I don't go all up. the like, cutting, cutting of the through, ties, right? Like, like crossroads. We're like cutting the shit. Like we're <laughs> yeah. So it's like just straight up truth, and mm-hmm. it's like you. Um, it might trigger you, which makes sense to me because when I look at that that aspect, like those particular deities. Mm-hmm. It's like that's – they're the catalysts of, you know, of society, yeah. of, of the human conscious collective. And it's like they're here to – you know, they're going to hold that space as long as we are, like, you know, yeah. checking into that, you know. So it's, it's like – they're here to really fire us up and get us going. And it might not be comfortable at first, but initially this is what's what's necessary. I think we need to start changing, like, our stories. And, yeah. like, you know, I feel, even for me personally, like, for a while, I definitely loved, like, 
the victim mentality life of like everything is against me like yeah. this is nothing is going right like for so many years like it, it like turned into like depression and mm-hmm. like anxiety and it was just so overwhelming but once you immediately like face your shadow and you're like you know friends I feel compassion for you and I understand you but right. you're a lesson like you know you're not here you're not real and like it's time to just kind of like yeah. move on and like once you let it flow through you which I think a lot of people want to like avoid it right and like it because just it is build. uncomfortable yeah. yeah so it's like because you, don't you wanna... have to feel things feelings are not right. always fun for people like but sometimes you have to have that release like you right. have to have that face forward like honest genuine talk it's just like a person yeah no, it, that's pretty interesting. So, Lisi and I, she, we both watch Pamela Erilyn. Um, we're a part of her Patreon, which she does, like, channelings mm-hmm. and, like, spiritual development workshops. And I think it was last week or maybe the week before. I, two weeks? Yeah, maybe, like, two weeks, two weeks ago. ago now, something like that. Yeah. But she channeled Mary Magdalene, the or the Magdalene so Order, good. which was Kuan Yin and Mother Mary and, you know, Isis so Isis. And, <laughs> and I think one of the ones that came up was... I think it was Mary Magdalene and she was like, why would you, or why are you afraid or in fear of being at Mm dis-ease? And when she broke it down, like dis-ease, it was like disease or dis, and that discomfort. Like when you think about this dis, like this, like out of balance thing going on. Dissonance. Anything that goes against the resonance of what you And they're like, why would you not want to experience that? Because that's like literally your body is like your tuning fork in a sense. And like other like people around you Mm -hmm. or just your environment in general. So it's like when you feel that like discomfort, then there's something out of balance there or there's something that you need to pay attention to in order to go for it with whatever your purpose or whatever you're doing. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's like, it's just interesting that stepping through, we were talking about this earlier, stepping through, you know, the shadow to get to the light and like stepping out of the wound and just like letting the light in. Um, And that's how you expand. That's how you grow. That's how we learn, which is like Mm -hmm. one of the things that I believe we're here for is just like, you know, we're here to learn about certain things like emotions, limitations, you know, the form, like, like really bringing things in the form, like Mm -hmm. through our creative process. Um, So yeah, I think that's, that's really really important to think about yeah um do you have a question for me or us <laughs> hmm let's see <laughs> uh she here? has some questions for yeshua but we might try and like might as well try <laughs> answer, to answer them <laughs> um oh so, yeah, what do you one. think that we seek within ourselves Ooh. oh gosh or what do you seek within yourself i guess um lately I've been um well obviously in a nutshell I would say personal truth or just truth especially where we are now where it's like with the internet and Mm -hmm. politics and just like our current state of like just like reality it's it it all seems like a facade and I mean it is illusion it is a glam it is a glamour yeah and it's like seeking truth through that I feel like I can speak for the collective in a sense where I feel like we're all like kind of grasping for that in some way or another and like different yeah. areas of our life. Um, for me currently, um, I've been seeking cause I feel definitely connected to my higher self. Cause that's what I started off with like over a year ago and working with green Tara, doing like all the self love stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but now I feel that I'm like going back in time, like really like going back to like, mystery schools yeah. that wisdom of the ancients like <laughs> all the she stuff knows that we just, like we're like totally i just yeah. did um i asked her <laughs> she wanted some questions asked and i do like pendulum work and i knew the que- i knew some of the questions she was gonna ask and i kind of knew the answers and they were right all right, right. <laughs> <laughs> she was like oh, i already know what you want to ask like the first question i was like hmm, let's see what she got and it was like it was spot on um, but yeah so it was just like um i like totally lost my train of thought but Oh, as far as, like, what I'm seeking. Yeah, so it's, like, going back in time, like, really checking in with those. And this kind of just came to me, but it's, like, I'm revisiting, um, like, the the wisdom of the ancients. I keep getting this, like, yeah. message, like, activate the eye of wisdom. Ooh. And it's, like, all of this, like, secret, you know, mystery school stuff and, like, these ancient teachings. Um, so I'm, like, connecting with Yeshua. And this is where Yeshua and Mary Magdalene come in. And I'm connecting with them to, like you know, learn that stuff. And they've been coming through via like books and like things online or just like, you know, I'm usually so excited for the book yeah. that you're going to get. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I like, can't wait 
need to like show it to you. Like uh, I'm, I'm really looking for it. Yeah. I got her. There was a book that I found for like three dollars, and it's the Lost Gospel of Jesus, which uh. is like this guy who went to Tibet and like. 1895 mm-hmm. or something all the way from England which was a really long way whenever yeah. you think about that because it's like from there to there and like he hiked to the mountain like went up like hung out with the monks and they're like we don't know yeah. what you're talking about bro there's right. no gospel here climbs back down like four hours in breaks his leg they have to like hike him back all the way up Wow. and then he's there for like eight months like kind of gaining their trust and they're like yeah. okay we'll let you see it and they give it to him yeah. and then he yeah and so it's the translated version of that so. wow Wow, that's so yeah. cool. I'm of so Lord excited. Lord Isa. Yes. It's funny, too, because, like, when you mentioned it, I was like, you sure you don't want to read it first? And you were like, no, no this was for you. And I was like, yes. Like, because I was just like, obviously, I want to be polite because I'm just like, I want you to read it first. You know, I'm into it. but like, No, it's all you. But that made me really excited. I was like, yes, because, like, it's like when you know when you get, like, a new book, oh, especially yeah. when it's, like, it, it's going to get you deeper into your work and just mm-hmm. expand on that. It's like you have to, like, it's like knowing about it. I'm like, okay, I got to get that book. I got to yep. read it. And I, so it was like, as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, are you sure you don't? <laughs> no. So that was great. It's not mine. <laughs> um, so, like, what are you seeking? I guess it's, what do you think overall? I think that's a very, you, what you kind of mm-hmm. said about like the purpose and like what you're trying to do and defining that. Like, I definitely feel like I'm seeking that too, just yeah. trying to. I have an idea of what I want. It's just the steps that I need to go into place in order to get there. Right. Um, I guess that would be, like, my outward seeking, but, you know, what I'm trying to do in life and just kind of where I'm going personally. But, like, my inwardness, definitely seeking the sacred, like, union and, mm-hmm. like, how do you balance the divine feminine and masculine while also honoring, like, the divine feminine as, right. like, the body that I'm in, I guess. Yeah. And really... A lot of, like, divine feminine work. Like, a lot of going back into, like, yeah. that compassion. And, like, where is mm-hmm. that, like, sense mm-hmm. of, like, oneness and, like, empoweredness. And right. finding that stillness. Right. And it's interesting, like, just thinking about that, too, where it's, like, I feel, you know, obviously we're out of balance. Yeah. Um, the masculine and the feminine. And it's interesting how, like, when women decide to, like, when they start taking the lead and, like, tipping the scales back to, like, balancing... It like it's it's kind of just like flows like it's like we're like once we get our mindset on stuff and Mm -hmm. we get that empowerment feeling and motivation like we just start making the moves and it's interesting when when the men especially like partners in life when they step behind and they like support you in that way and they're like I don't get it but like I got your back or whatever you need or (laughs) like it's like those I mean it feels true versus like now how it's like the male, like, the dominant male force, the patriarchy from, like, that unevolved perspective, Mm -hmm. like, really, it's so forced. Like, it's like, you can't go out. You have to fully cover yourself. Like, don't look at that man. Or you can't drive. It's just, like, so much tension and so much force where it just, it doesn't feel natural. And then it creates, like, this other swing where you have, like, women who are like, oh, like, I'm empowered. And it's like, yes, you are empowered, but to the point where it's, like, almost pushing. And it's, like, that negative aspect. Yeah, and it's still, like, like, it's, like, you're not any, like, you're not helping them. And and I feel like there's a concept of, like, a pendulum to where it's, like, once you create, like, this negative aspect on the other side, Mm -hmm. you're going to create the polarity of it on the opposite end. Right. So you just keep swinging, like, back and forth, and, like, you have to find that state of, like, neutrality between the two. It's, like, you can't can't feed the trolls. Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it's, like, you just gotta, like, don't feed the trolls. You just have to, like, be in, like, your own, like, little center lane, which is hard, because, like, it's so easy to get sucked into, like, the negativity of, like, politics and, like, the negativity of everything that's going wrong in the world, but, like... You also don't want to again be like that. Everything's fine. I know. Like, I also, yeah. Because I, I I do that. Yeah. I I'm not a fan of the news. Like, yeah. Whatsoever. Me either. Like, and it's like it's interesting because I grew up in Washington yeah. D.C. like Maryland area. So like politics. I I even still have a podcast right now. Um, millennial social or millennial logic is the name of the podcast. If you guys want to check it out. <laughs> um. But and it's on iTunes and SoundCloud. Anyways. Um. But so it's like I've always had this like connection with politics and just that whole thing. And for me, it was always, like, humanitarian, like, I'm going to do this or I'm going to, like, protest and, you know, from that perspective. But then after a while, it's just, like, 
I like I'm a firm believer of belief systems mm-hmm. and like the intentions. Like if you put keep putting yep. intentions into the system, then it's gonna it'll be there and it'll be very real. But like it's like that healthy like not being checked in, but also not being like super checked out that I'm kind of you know going through now. And it's like I try to look at everything like as Donald Donald Trump being our president, like that's a catalyst in society. Yeah. This is like it's hello people wake up right. Yeah. Like this is like we're all sleepwalking. Like get up like speak up for yourself stand in your power stand in your truth so that's kind of how when it comes to like the outer world things or that illusion or that glamour of you know that very fear-based um reality that's kind of how i look at it as like this is just like a catalyst like this is we need to move from these old patterns and these systems and you know so that's Sorry. that's oh no you're totally fine Feeding yeah the puppy. yeah Drink, giving her she's some gotta water. get some water it's colorado <laughs> it's so dry. um so yeah, so um question for you. What do you think um what are your your perspectives or your ideas of the afterlife? Like what I don't know if you've been doing some research yeah. on that or anything, but because <laughs> like, read... there have been some interesting things like theories out there. Do you know have you read the book Journey of Souls? No, that sounds familiar. It's um it's this guy who did multiple like hypnotherapies and people mm-hmm. in like to the point where they would like regress all the way back to like before they were born to like mm-hmm. that void space of yeah. like all the endless potential. And um it's just so interesting because a lot of it goes back to like we make these choices. Like mm-hmm. the bodies, I think that there is no continuation like you know yeah. this is just like a form that we take and that we chose to take yeah. during this time in order to like best suit our needs and to best help the collective and to best mm-hmm. heal in like whatever way that we are called to and I think that we choose our parents I think that we mm-hmm. choose like yes. what our intentions are I think that we're pretty much like given options and they're like here's three choices that are the best fit for your personal development like mm-hmm lay it out what do you think do you agree with it yes or no and then you go forward with it and you make agreements with your the people that you encounter be it good or bad right and sometimes you have to go through that because that may be collected karma or like from right yeah that you you just need to like clear and go through and like i don't think i think that there's definitely free will but i think the ultimate end of it is going with the flow of like divine will yes. you can always yes. like and i think that everyone has that a potential limitless potential to tap into that divine right. will. right and it's just if you choose to right. and then from there it's just like the cycle that keeps yeah. like repeating like yeah. it's just cyclical right and unless we like try to like recognize the patterns or break free for like the best that's probably you know for us so right yeah, I definitely think there's an afterlife, and I yeah, <laughs> and I think that we're here with like a higher yeah. purpose, and this yeah. is just like a middle ground in order to like continue forward, learning different lessons. Right, and that's kind of like where I, my like stance on that too, your perspective is just like it, this is like Earth is a school, and I'm taking this from like mm-hmm. Dolores Cannon, totally. like I yeah. totally like when she <laughs> when yeah. I just heard her theory about this or what came forth mm-hmm. from um, the the um, clients that she uh, worked with. And she's a, if you guys don't know about Dolores Cannon, she's a hypnotist um, and past life regression therapist. And what she did, basically, she put um, her clients in the deepest level of trance where the the subconscious is completely out of the way um, or the consciousness, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like the ego, all of that stuff. Like you're completely knocked out. Like you're like a clear channel. And she like speaks directly with the higher self and um, usually at sometimes you know different like entities or presences Mm -hmm. or like obviously the higher self of those individuals come through and they you know give this this um this uh you know these messages and the one she always takes her clients through the death experience of each life yeah like when she does the past life regression because usually she says whatever is um whatever is like kind of you're struggling with in this life usually had something to do with like how you died or something like that like that like you know trauma so anyway she does that and like all of these people have had the same pretty much overall encounters yeah totally Uh so all these people had like the same encounters um as far as you once you die you wake up um like the veil is completely removed and you know you might go to a resting place but you definitely at some point come to you know a council and you're actually shown Mm -hmm. a preview of the life that you just lived from the perspective of everyone else. 
So, you know, before you even went into that, that life, you had this plan. You're like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to meet up with these people. And there's some things I need to finish up Mm -hmm. and I want to learn about this and like figure this thing out, you know? And then obviously when you're born, the veil is down, you have no idea of your divinity or your plan. And it's like, you know, you're literally crawling your way back to source. You have to figure it all out. And that's the part of the game. So, and that's kind of how I look at it. And Mm -hmm. that's why astrology speaks so much to me because, um, this is like I look at the charts as our plan of action. Like this is like how we want to enter, and we're going to work with these cosmic energies and all that. So um, as far as the afterlife, yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely believe there's an afterlife. I definitely yeah. believe that we're like in a very like, what is it like, like small like or not small but lower dimensional yeah. like reality here, mm-hmm. like the very tight, of- very dense, yeah, mm-hmm. like of form. And so just even trying to think about not being in a body, not being, like, tied to yeah, earth. or like, a mind, like, right, having, like, yeah. Right. It's just, like, it, it's really, it just, like, every time I think about it, it blows my mind. But I do understand it, but it's still just, like, it literally is mind-blowing. And I like when you say, as far as, like, Dharma mm-hmm. is, like, and I feel like Dharma is in your purpose is association with divine will. And that's the whole point is, like, just letting things flow Mm -hmm. and then you will find your way if you like use your body as a tuning fork or your environment you will flow eventually you might you're gonna have some discomfort but you'll align with that purpose and that path you know and I believe that free will is when you you're creating from like karma or karma is when you're creating from free will so it's like if you're just like you know making these decisions Mm -hmm. that might not serve you or whatever you stay in your patterns and you're creating this karma and then you get you know you don't execute your purpose and then you're still on that, that will. So I definitely feel that. Yeah. When it, when it comes to ascension and all of those things, that's kind of my stance in there. Um, so where do you think like memories are held? So if like you're, if memories technically aren't in your physical body, if you can mm -hmm. remember them from others, so where would your memories be? So, um, okay. So the way I look at the human conscious collective yeah. is like as a data bank okay. where it's like, it's like, even if you think of like the cloud, like the, yeah, and I've been yeah. thinking about this a lot lately because I'm like, Oh, anyone can tap. Like, yeah. I think you and I talked about it Probably. maybe, but anyone can tap into yeah. it. It's just like some people have like stronger abilities yes. or like a greater connection with doing that. Or like people are just blocked and they haven't opened themselves up. So like, as far as humanity, there's definitely that. And then I think when it comes to, like, not being a body, not being on Earth and, mm-hmm. you know. Your personal I think, memories. Yeah, your personal memories. Or just, like, memories to, like, some people have memories of the void or, mm-hmm. like, this of source or being with source and, like, being, like, light energy. I feel like that's, like, a higher consciousness. Like, obviously it is yeah. a higher consciousness, but a higher, like, cloud or, like, data bank or however okay. you want to think about it. But as far as, like, memories, like, within the Earth plane, that's what I, I feel that the human conscious collective that's like the data bank of memories and like people like we're all essentially one connected Mm -hmm. so it's like you know we have like this like fabric of you know you're just like like a a little thread essentially yeah of like the memories are just like the consciousness Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that I I think that it's kind of similar. I don't think that your memories are a part of, like, your... Uh, yeah. There's a chance they're somewhere in your brain. Yeah. But I also think, like, we could have them and, like, they carry with us. And it's right, yeah. And if we're all just energy and light and you have a grid, it's somewhere probably within, like, that grid framework. Mm-hmm. That, like, where you store, like, if you have crystalline DNA, it's probably mm-hmm. a part of that, too. Yeah. And I think that, like you said, it's, you know, somewhere collected into the cloud and like you're probably (laughs) downloaded. And I think that Akashic Records kind of ties into that too, Mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, it's all based in Mother Earth. Like you're on like this plane of like Gaia. And so like I think Gaia definitely like, you know, that density of it like holds our vibrations too. Right. And I think I read something, it might be in the book that you, The Ascension Magic, but it was like, I think the core, which is like the 2D where it's like, it is Mm -hmm. in association with the Akashic record. And then that's like, yeah, where, and like, there's, you know, the placeholders there that you could think about Lucifer Mm -hmm. or like Lilith, all of those like very like dark beings, so to speak. They're in that core holding that, right, they're holding that that space for the duality Mm -hmm. and, like, the records are kept there and, like, so all of that stuff, like, as far as, like, with this planet and the karmic energy of our planet and just, like, everything, Um, which is is so cool to think about that. So I feel like, yeah, you have that and you have the consciousness where it's, like, differing dimensional reality. I mean, they're different dimensions. Yeah, right. Like you just said. 
Um, so I guess we can ask a few more questions and then yeah. wrap it up. I don't. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What do I have on here? Oh. So who is your most dominant guide, spirit guide, and why do you feel believe so that they're your dominant? If you have one, if not, yeah. you know who you're working with. Um, I guess the one that I've worked with the longest would be like my most personal guide would mm -hmm. be Celine. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I would like go out to clubs, like mm -hmm. when I was like a little younger, like mm -hmm. that's what name I would use right. instead. And like I've always, <laughs> for some reason, like that's just like what I would yeah. like go through. And, um, I think cause like I associate, um, with her. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I think Celine, I just, she's just like a goddess who's like yeah. a moon goddess. And, um, right. I uh, feel like I've, Definitely. I haven't, like, really read into any of her, like, mythology or anything, like, whatever is associated with her, but I know she's a moon goddess. Before. What's funny is, like, Sailor Moon's based off of her. And really? So, yeah. Oh, my God. So, like, Endymion, course. so the so the whole story of Selene is, like, she is, like, the moon, and she looks down on this earthly prince, Endymion. Yeah, yeah. And she falls in love with him, and the only way she can visit him is in his dreams. And yeah. so she essentially puts him into, like, a total slumber so yeah. that she can visit him, like, all the time. Wow, And yeah. so she's, like, the full uh, full moon aspect of, right. like, the triple, mm -hmm. like, goddess. Yeah. Um, and for the Greeks. So. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just had her, I guess, because I've always liked that Sailor Moon, you know. And right. And, like, because it's about love and, like, just using, like, that's, like, right. what you need to use. And right. so whenever I was in, like, situations when I didn't really know what to do or I didn't quite know who to call yeah. on, like, that would be the most immediate one. Right. Um, right now I'm working currently... You know, Kwan Yin's popped up a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot, a lot. Like, yeah, yeah, you've been mentioning her. Yeah, she's been popping up recently, and then Mary Magdalene, like she's just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I dig her. She's just yeah. really, it's just like such a nice, like feeling space. Right. To be in. Yeah, like, and she's like very, like if there's things that you need to do, like mm -hmm. especially in like connection with the divine feminine, she's just like on it. She's like, all right, I'm gonna open this up and mm -hmm. this, and we're gonna do this, and it's like. I feel like you, we, like, we've been reading the same books. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like literally the same guides are kind of yep. like speaking through us through like literature or speaking yeah. to us through literature. So it's, it's really cool. Um, so I don't know if you have any more questions that you want to ask or. I think that's all that I got. Are we, yeah, we're all good. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, well, where can we find you? You can find me at Luminous Collections or Alicia.Maria on Instagram and LuminousCollections.Squarespace.com. Uh, cool. Yeah. And I'll put that. It should be in the information below, too, mm -hmm. if you guys want to check her out. She has, like, awesome stuff. She's like, such Working a soft, <laughs> compassion, like, vibe. Like, I definitely get that, oh. like, goddess energy from oh, you. Thank like, it's, you. It's thank super you. cool, and I'm so glad we, like, connected. Yay! Yay. <laughs> I'm so happy we did this. Yay. This is really awesome. Yay. It's a beautiful day in Boulder. I know. The weather's We're just perfect. hanging out outside yeah. at a park in the neighborhood. Yeah. It's, like, super chill. Um, so, yeah, guys, definitely find me on Instagram at Urania underscore universe. Um, check out my website, UraniaUniverse.com, and I'll be, of course, uploading videos. We're probably going to do this pretty often, I feel I think like. we should. Because we're in the same yeah. class, spiritual development classes, and yeah. We're and probably on the same, same path somewhere right, else yeah, that we I, don't even yeah, know. Yeah, we just asked the pendulum, <laughs> pendulum, and it definitely confirmed that, so. It's good. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Bye.